Good morning, good evening, and welcome to World of Warships. My name is Robin, and today we will be sailing and reviewing the British supercruiser Edgar. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you will enjoy your time here. So, Edgar, finally. For those who have been watching my videos for a while, you know how many times I have featured British light cruisers, especially Minotaur. Needless to say that these ships are some of my favorites in the game by far, for their adaptability, high risk, high reward gameplay and just the devastation they can wreak if in the right place at the right time. Edgar just delivers in all the aforementioned departments, with direct improvements from Minotaur, being firepower, torpedoes, all the way to the armor. You do, however, get a few drawbacks, with a slightly worse concealment and overall a larger hull, which can be a disadvantage in certain situations. Today's battle might not be the highest damage you've ever seen or the craziest comeback of the year, but a very solid example of what the ship can or cannot do. So, if we are done checking out the ship's build, commanders and stats, let's go right ahead and take the Edgar to battle. And here we are, on the map Sleeping Giant Domination Mode. We have gotten ourselves a right flank spawn near Objective D, which is arguably my favorite spot to fight on the map. And considering that there are no carriers, we are going to push to what is also arguably my favorite spot on this favorite side of the map, located at F6, F7. Matchmaker is composed of only three battleships and four destroyers per side, the rest being a mix of heavy and light cruisers, with only the enemy Annapolis being a radar threat to us. In all aspects, this lineup is rather favorable for Edgar, even though carriers are not really an issue for the ship considering how strong the entire suit is. Let's talk about these strengths, actually. On paper and through gameplay, I consider the ship a bit nuts. The list of improvements over Minotaur are as follow. First off, one extra turret obviously, but all of them are now completely 360 degree rotating. Even if this does not really matter, considering how fast these turrets turn anyway, this remains a definite improvement. Secondly, you get access to the alternative fire mode, which you'll see me using a lot this battle. This fire mode doesn't really make a lot of sense in terms of sustained DPM, but in that setup, your shells deal an extra 50% damage while their pen literally doubles, which allows you to punish broadsides extremely well. Third, the torpedoes. While you keep the same amount of tubes than Minotaur, the firing angles are actually much, much better. Also, you get 12 kilometers of range on them, which allows you to comfortably stealth fire. Fourth, but not least, the armor. Now, the ship is still a floating citadel, but the forward and rear plating actually has spaced armor. And believe it or not, this makes angling much, much more efficient against battleships and heavy cruisers. The only thing Edgar does not get compared to Minotaur is short fuse AP, terrible anti-submarine weaponry, and again, worse concealment and maneuverability. But let's get back to the action here. We've managed to reach our spot without issues and the first enemy targets are already spotted. Enemy Mogador rushed in the objective and already lost most of his HP. And as we poke out of cover, we unleash our first rapid fire salvo to bag the kill and get our first blood. Enemy Annapolis also has been spotted on the other side of the map, which allows me to be a bit more aggressive than I should this early in the game, because I know I can smoke up and remain concealed without too much issue. We do have an enemy Smolensk on the enemy team, already pouncing on us for very decent damage. And with the Paolo Emilio lurking around the cap, we are going to smoke up as soon as we enter it, to prevent any further loss of HP. This is now a very strong position to hold, and especially in this context, with no radars and minimal destroyer threats, the enemy force here is going to have a very hard time rooting us out. We also have a friendly Annapolis bringing up the rear, which pretty much guarantees that the cap is ours and we'll be able to defend it very efficiently. Enemy Satsuma is also, in my opinion, the biggest threat on this flank, so I already start focusing her. 
Also, if you pay attention to the minimap and what is happening at A right now, our team has been very aggressive and pushed in hard on both key zones, with the enemy team already on the back foot over there. This is surprising, especially in Superships meta, where everyone tends to sit back waiting for the other team to overextend into them. I'm pretty sure the lack of CVs and the presence of only three battleships per side got our cruisers, myself included, much more confident on trying unusual actions. And here of course we can see the crazy DPM of Edgar. Now I am not doing much to this Satsuma. If I don't hit superstructure, my shells pretty much either bounce or shatter. But the pure psychological impact of this sustained fire has the Japanese battleship angle hard and basically remove half his firepower from the fight, which is what we want. I am still a bit skeptical about Paolo Emilio though. My APF has been pointing quite right recently and with Annapolis behind an island, I'm not sure if he can guess whether or not a destroyer is within radar range. My sonar only has a few seconds left and I'm already maneuvering to get my ship ready to get out of here if needs be. And just like clockwork, the cap is contested. This is bad, as I said, my hydroacoustic just finished, meaning that if Annapolis does not radar now, this Paolo can rush both Kitakazi and I, and that would mean trouble. This is exactly what's going to happen though. We already have torpedoes coming right for us, and the Italian destroyer is going to reveal himself. I do try to hold my fire though, I want to make sure I have a clear way out before I get spotted and even if we are about to eat one of these torpedo, we have an exit from this angry rusher. Paolo Emilio is going to show us his side to launch some torpedoes and we are again going to use the rapid fire ability to dispatch of him as fast as possible. That 50% damage bonus here can be devastating against angled destroyers you still do full pen damage to them. As you can see, 15,000 only with our rear guns, and that right here is what makes Edgar insane. We are out of dodge though. This could have went poorly if we did not preemptively maneuver our ship in a kiting position. But with the enemy destroyer removed from this flank, we stand better chances at defending the cap, as currently the enemy team outnumbers us by two on this side. The A flank seems to be holding out alright, so at least we don't have to worry about this just yet. We've also lost a fair deal of HP in these engagements, and even if our heal recovered the majority of the damage, we are unable to heal past 30k now, which could be problematic. The goal is to tuck in safely next to our island again and try to use Marseille's open water spotting to protect the flank. Enemy Satsuma gets dealt with Annapolis, that will definitely even up the odds around here. But it's time to prepare for an inevitable enemy push, with enemy Venegia leading the charge. Friendly Annapolis is a bit exposed, and even if he's ready to get to cover, I still want to assist him as much as I can. The American heavy cruiser definitely has more stopping power than I do, so I decided to creep forward and land my smoke. But seeing that Annapolis is not using his radar, and the fact that we both know Venegia is charging us through her own smoke, I decide to push out and give some spotting on the situation. We are unsure where the enemy Ruprecht is, and the last known position of Smolensk also was ages ago. Torpedoes in the water for good measures. Venegia briefly gets spotted from our teammates at A, enough for both Annapolis and I to slightly reset the cap. Unfortunately, on the other side of the map, things start to go a bit south as we lose both our Yugumo and Austin almost back to back. We're about to make it up for it though, and with the enemy Smolensk getting caught in Annapolis's Hydro just as he peaks the island. And full HP Smolensk is about to turn into no HP Smolensk, with both Annapolis AP Salvo combined with our rapid fire slamming into his broadside, only for us to get the kill and a devastating strike. Venegia, that just witnessed her teammate gets absolutely vaporized, is having second thoughts on pushing two supercruisers now, but that hesitation has her stall for a second. Enough to eat a ship full of Annapolis's AP shells and then one of our torpedo. Annapolis is on reload cooldown though, so only Marseille and I can finish her off. 
I am benefiting from my smoke cover still, so I unleash all guns, but with the Ruprecht still in the rear, I keep a comfortable angle in case I have to evade return fire. A few more salvos later, we managed to finish off the Italian heavy cruiser, turning what was a 3 vs 5 into a 3 vs 1, with the enemy Yoshino falling back to her home cap. However, our efforts on this flank have only served to stall the enemy point lead. The A flank has completely collapsed, with only a friendly Holland on the run, and the remaining enemy ships will soon start converging to finish us off. Meanwhile, we still have this Ruprecht to deal with, and with the enemy Condé spotted in a crossfire at A, I have to be very cautious. One last parting salvo on the German battlecruiser before I start thinking about my next move. With the point lead we have, the best course of action is to try and defend. At this point there is no way we can prevent Condé from securing A, only Hallen can do that, and I'm sure it would be quite perilous with Yamagiri still around, but the French supercruiser is on such low HP that our friendly destroyer might just be able to deal with it. Friendly Marseille, however, has to start lending a closer hand. We both have been pushed back significantly from our covers, and it's time to close the distance again. Annapolis is holding his own, under quite the pressure, I'm certain, and we both have to try and assist. Right now, the enemy team is spread out, with Republic and Annapolis last seen way behind Objective B. And with Yoshino pushing up quite aggressively, I decide to stop here and start applying pressure. I have to admit, Edgar, just like many other light cruisers actually, is most efficient when enemies are pushing into her. Here I make the mistake of using my smoke. Annapolis is unable to maintain visual on the Japanese cruiser and we can't just be sitting here waiting for visuals, so I decide to push out and get a bit more involved. We've also barely been missed by Republic's shells, which we have to be very wary about, but now is no time for caution, we have to get rid of Yoshino. Confederate achieved, we've been shooting a lot of targets indeed, even if so far our damage is nothing exceptional. The Japanese cruiser realizes its mistake and tries to go back on, but it's too little too late, and we earn our Kraken unleashed just before going back in concealment as we finally lay eyes on Republic's position. No time for respite though, we have to assist our Haaland, currently in a precarious spot against Condé. The French supercruiser is perfectly angled to us however, so our impact in that fight will be limited. Only a few moments later, unfortunately, the friendly destroyer is taken out, effectively leaving Annapolis, Marseille and I the only survivors of our team, with a lot ahead of us still. Tops out towards Objective A's escape route in case Condé pulls out of it, but to no avail, as Holland managed to set a permanent fire that eventually burned him down. We can now take a bit of a breather. These last few minutes have been action heavy, but now we can benefit from a short downtime to collect ourselves and set up new positions, even if we haven't really moved out of this general area during the entire fight. Ruprecht is obviously our next target, and I'm going to try and set a crossfire from the middle of the map in case he tries to push down C or rush out our Annapolis. Marseille has quickly come back to D, which is perfect timing, as we need to be ready for this late defense. With 634 points ahead compared to the enemy team's 471, all we have to do is hold what we got. And if we can draw the enemies to us one after the other, we stand good chances at winning this. Ruprecht gets a little too aggressive, and he is quickly reminded about Marseille and Annapolis' firepower, though we are right here for the ambush as it tries to turn away. With again a comfortable kiting angle, I am not at all afraid to take him on, and with our salvos landing accurately on his superstructure, the German battlecruiser is quickly low enough for us to use our alternative pharaoh mode and finish him off. This is something I do quite often with Edgar. If a ship is below around 15,000 HP and broadside to me, you can almost always guarantee a kill, allowing you to save some precious seconds where you might still get damaged by either secondaries or receive a parting salvo. Now, this alternate fire mode is controversial for most people, and I tend to agree. Conde, Annapolis, Edgar, Zorki, these ships would still perform just fine without the F button, and that's something the player base wholeheartedly agree with, though as long as the feature is in the game, I personally won't refrain from using it in the right condition, 
especially if it can turn the game around. Speaking of which, when I expected Annapolis and Republic to be much further away, a quick radar from our friendly cruiser reveals both of them in a rapid push towards D. Marseille is in a precarious spot, with Republic about to push her rear where she won't be able to bring her guns to bear. The only thing we can do is help lay down some suppressive fire on the enemy Annapolis. Torpedoes in the water through the B-cap, even if we are barely out of range, this might catch Republic off if she goes through with the rush. I am playing very cautiously here, unfortunately being the least tanky cruiser of us three, but I'm mostly looking for angles on Annapolis where he won't be able to efficiently retaliate. I know what this cruiser can do, as we just witnessed the enemy Republic quickly fall from our own Annapolis AP shell. So right now I am using my allies as cover and their spotting for my own benefit. Enemy torpedoes crossing left to right. While my APF still points at the cruiser, this gives me a good indication that Yamagiri might be coming out of A. Annapolis desperately tries to get to cover, but by doing so also starts showing me more broadside. And right before I expect my shells to start hitting the island, we unleashed our rapid fire and pushed out of our smoke. This also seems to be a good timing, as the American supercruiser goes back into concealment. However, our saturating volleys are enough to finish him off, securing our 7th frag of the game right after getting the high caliber medal, breaching 200k. At this point the game is secured. Having destroyed all but one enemy ship, we have a fantastic point lead and we should tick all the way to 1000 very soon. RPF is locked on Yamagiri, and at this point the chase is on for the remaining few minutes we have. Considering the torpedoes we've seen earlier, I have a good feeling that the Japanese destroy is right on the F5 square. If she goes north, she'll be safe from harm and we'll be able to sail away undetected until the point sticks out, but the other option could be that she went south instead, and if so, will come straight to us. More torpedoes in the water, and suddenly I am being radio located. This is confirmation, prompting me to activate my hydroacoustic only shortly after to catch her right in my net. And at this range you know what's going to happen. I don't even think she was aware of my position. The moment she pokes out of the island we are ready for her all guns blazing, rapid fire on and we take her out, ending this rather tense game on Sleeping Giant with a victory. 213,000 damage dealt, 1.6 million credits gained and 70,000 XP earned, definitely boosted by modifiers, don't worry. We got this result out of 576 shells, 1 torpedo hit and 3 citadels, sinking 8 ships in the process. Devastating Strike, Confederate, Kraken Unleashed, First Blood and High Caliber with 3800 base XP. We greatly contributed to the effort by taking out 3 out of 4 enemy destroyers, damaged Satsuma and Ruprecht to a great extent while dealing with most of their cruisers, though this game would have been much different if not for the dedicated effort of our allies, especially Haaland, Annapolis and Marseille for their contribution. Overall, quite a balanced battle that I hope was a great example of how Edgar can be commanded. Well people, this video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching it all the way through. I hope you enjoyed this replay and if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. It greatly helps the channel. If you did not, well then thumbs down, but stay tuned anyway. There will be more content to come about World of Warships. Until then. You have a good one, and you take it easy.